Hi everyone, it's Lori and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to review the magic of color grading and how to add color grading to your image to give it just a beautiful finished look. So in order to understand how to use color grading in Lightroom, we first need to understand what color grading is. So color grading is not color correction. Color correction is when you use the HSL panel to impact the colors in your image. So we can impact the saturation of the red tones or the orange tones in this image, or we could impact the color, the hue, or the brightness with the luminance. So when you're editing your images, the first thing you always want to do is make sure you have your colors set for your primary image. Um, you also want to make sure that you have done any exposure adjustments. So for this image, I opened up the shadows a little bit, added just a touch of clarity. And if you were going to do any masking, any enhancements to the image you want to do first before you think about color grading. So what is color grading? Well, color grading is a method that really started with film. And in film and TV, they use color grading to get consistent tones throughout the frames of the scene. So there may be parts of a movie that's shot in one location and something shot in another, and they want some cohesiveness to the overall feel and emotion of the, mo the movie or a TV show. And so to do that, they use color grading. In photography, we can also use color grading, not only to bring cohesiveness maybe to a set of images, but also just to overall enhance our images. And there's a couple ways to enhance the color in your image. So the two easiest ways, I think they're the easiest, are going to be to start with, in the basic panel here in Lightroom, your white balance or your temperature in your tint. So this is an easy way to impact with a little bit of color grading. I like to think of color grading like using a filter. So if you're using an app or you have presets, sometimes those do things to the tones in your image that are very similar to color grading. But temperature and tint are a great place to start. So you could see we could add a little more warmth to this image. We could also, if we don't want, we want some blue tones, or if we want some of that magenta in the sky, we could use some temperature and tint. Now you could also do this with a mask. So we could mask just the sky and we could alter our temperature and tint and not the rest of our scene. So that's an easy way to do something very similar to color grading. All right, let's go to a next option, which is a little more advanced, and that's using the tone curve. So with the tone curve, we can't use masking, but we can come down and add some tints of red if we wanted and just a subtle pop in the midtones or maybe you want to add some in the shadows, can impact your image very similar to color grading. You can also use the blue channel here. And in the highlights, maybe we want to increase the blue tones, or we could decrease them, adding more warmth to the image, and then maybe come down to the shadows and add those blues back. So creating this um, kind of reverse or S-curve formation we have impacted the highlights of our image, which are over here in our histogram, by bringing those down into the yellow area. And then we've increased the blue tones in our shadows. So you can see now the before and the after. So this is very similar to color grading. Now what you'll notice is it's doing it to the entire image. So a tone curve adjustment is going to be to the entire image where you put your mark. And since this sand area is shadows, it is impacting that. So you just have to think about that when you're doing your color grading adjustments. So we could we could increase that if we wanted. We could come down and just make it very, very subtle, maybe bring these points back down. So there's all kinds of things you can do with the tone curve. All right, so let's go and I want to go back to the beginning of this image and so now let's talk about the true color grading editing tool here in Lightroom Classic. So with this color grading option, you have the option to click all three. This is where you can impact your midtones, your shadows, your highlights. Now you also have an option over here on the right to do a global adjustment. So this is going to really impact your entire image. So let's start here because I think it's the easiest to understand. What I like to do is increase my saturation pretty far up above 50 so that I can see the colors as I work. 
So now if I wanted to add some more um, blue tones to this or some maybe orange tones, I can come over and pick my color, which is the hue, and then I can reduce the saturation to bring it back to where it looks a little more normal. Now the last option is you have luminance, which is your brightness. You could darken that or you could brighten it depending on the story that you want to tell with this image. Now this is making a global adjustment, so it's adding the color throughout our image. So it's impacting the shadows, highlights, and the midtones. So if we look at before and after, you can see very subtle warm orange tones throughout the image. So it is giving it a nice consistent look. And maybe a, a time when I would use this is let's say I shot this sunrise um, earlier and it was very orange and peachy and warm. And then I shot it later and I want the colors to match. Color grading would be a great way to do that. So I could come in and match the two images using color grading. So that's one way that I've sometimes used it. All right, so that was making a global adjustment. Let's go back and I want to show you the way that I like to use color grading. So you have the individual areas. So we can impact our shadows, we can do the midtones, and we can do the highlights. So for this, for this image, we have a lot of bright highlights that are really where the sun was rising and it was definitely very peach and some of those um, warm tones. And so I want to start here. So again, I'm going to increase my saturation and then I'm going to pick the color that I'm wanting. So it could be that I want some magenta or I want some of these kind of orange, orange warm tones. Now I'm going to slide that saturation down until I get to a level that I feel looks natural and that I like. Then I can decide if I want to do anything with luminance. You don't have to change your luminance. So I could brighten it a little, I could leave it just right in the middle, or I could make it a little bit darker and then play with the saturation if I want. Now there's an eyeball right here, which is great because you can um, turn it on and off very quick so that you can see the change. So you can see how that's just impacting the highlights of my image. Now the rest of my image is pretty much in the shadows. You can see I've got, I do have some midtones, but I've also got some area in these shadows. So let's try the shadows next. Now when you're using color grading, you don't have to impact all three channels. You can just do the highlights. You could just do shadows. Um, and that's the fun part of playing with this. So again, I'm going to increase the saturation and let's pull the wheel over and add some blue tones. So I want to keep it kind of on the darker blue. Um, not quite purple, definitely more blue tones. And then I'm going to bring that saturation down. And luminance, again, I can decide if I want it to look real stormy or maybe I want to brighten those just a little bit. Now, you have a blending and a balance. This is where it is going to balance the um, options. You can see as I move it over, it's, it's reducing, um, it's kind of emphasizing the blue tones. And if I take it over, it's emphasizing the highlights. You can also just leave it in the middle, which is what I typically do. But if you wanted to play with that to see how it impacts your image, you could. Blending is the same thing. It's kind of how much um, you can see what it's doing to the sky. Or as I bring it over, it's kind of lessening it. So it's a way to um, also impact the color grade. So let's turn this one on. Let's see if we can get it off. There we go. That was before. Now this one has our highlights adjustment. And now with the shadows adjustment. So again, it's very, very subtle. Now you cannot use a mask with the color grading at this time. Hopefully in the future, that will be an option because it would be really, really nice to be able to do that. But if we didn't like the blue tones here, we could apply a mask and desaturate this a little bit and change the hues. So that is always an option with the new mask tools. Okay, and then we also have our midtones, which is going to impact the middle section of the image. And so you can bring that saturation over. This is also going to let you see the areas that it's impacting. It's really everything outside of the shadows and highlights. And so here, probably want to just add some more of maybe these yellow hues. Um, and again, bring that saturation down. And that's looking pretty nice. Turn it off and on. It is very, very subtle. 
And that's the beauty of color grading. You're not making dramatic. It's making really subtle changes that are going to really tell your story and enhance your image and give it that professional kind of quality. So let's look at another image example. This is an image that I did shoot with a lens baby lens. So it's kind of creative and blurred on the edges, but it's just a real simple image. I thought it would be good to showcase how to use color grading. So when we think about um, enhancing this image, it would definitely be for the highlights. And so I'm going to come over and just select highlights. Again, take the saturation up and then I can decide what kind of color tones that I want to bring into this image. So again, I'm going to add some warmth here, bring that saturation down. Now I want to keep it pretty heavy because this sky was just so, so boring and, um, and blah, but I am going to maybe darken it just a little bit. And you do have to watch and make sure you're not getting any color um, issues there. So I'll bring that saturation down just a little bit. I've got a little bit over here. Um, I don't particularly love, but I'm really just using this image to show you how how color grading works. Now for this water area, we can see now that it has added some of those tones to the image in the water, which would make sense if we had had this beautiful sky. Now I could come in and in the shadow areas, if I wanted to add some of that blue, orange and blue are very cinematic colors to add to your images. And so a lot of times those are the natural choices, but I'm going to show you another example where I use other colors. So just turning that on and off, you can see now I've added that blue tone. This has definitely given the image an overall much better look than it had to start with. All right, a next image that I want to show you is going to be a nature flower image, which is what I um, typically shoot, shoot the most. So I wanted to show you this image and it was, it was really fine the way it was, but I think when I come in and do a little bit of color grading, it can really make, uh, just take it to the next level. So let's do um, the same thing that we've been working on. Now you could do a global adjustment to this image, but I really want to target these highlight areas. So I'm gonna come over to the highlights and I'm gonna increase that saturation and then come around and this time I'm gonna do some different colors. I wanna really work within the magenta and the purple hues um, and I'm just looking for what's going to work. I'm probably even going to bump the saturation more. I want to closely match the flower so that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to bring down the saturation just until it's pretty subtle. I don't want it to overtake my subject but I want to just add, add that into the scene. Now I could also try if I wanted to add a little more warmth or maybe play with adding some green tones. But I think I'm gonna stick with that purple. And luminance, let's brighten just a little bit, or we could darken. I think I'm just gonna stick with the brightening and we can turn that on and off. It's very, very subtle. That's what I love about color grading. Now let's go over to our shadows um, and see there if we do our saturation. So the shadows are in these darker areas around the image and those have a lot of green. So let's go up and this time we're going to do um, opposite or complementary colors on the color wheel. So magenta and green are going to be complementary. So that's one way also to think about color grading is think about the color wheel. So I'm going to bring that saturation way down this time. I really just want a subtle, subtle hint of that green and I may brighten it. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking nice. Turn that off and on. You can just see how that's impacting the green right here and up here. It's giving us a, a much kind of brighter spring image. This image is actually an aster and it was in the fall, but I do like the change in the green tones around the image. And you can see how quick that is with color grading. It's really a quick edit. Now, if I wanted to see about any changes to the midtones, um, we can see that the midtones are throughout this image. So I'm just going to play with it to see if I add some warmth with the yellow, what that does, or I could come over and add some blue tones. Now that looks like it's going to be harsh, but we could bring, bring that saturation way down and just see again, look at the difference it's made. It's making that purple a lot more kind of bluish tone. But let's go around and do the opposite complementary color and let's add some yellow warmth. And let's see if we increase that saturation. So this is giving it another 
another layer to our colors and turn that off and on. And that's just giving it that brightness. It's also highlighting, if I increase the luminance, it's highlighting our little B right here just a little bit. So one way would be to edit without the midtones, and that would be the look right here, which is fine. But I really like the warmth and the brightness that's coming with this light and really showcasing our bumblebee. So what I encourage you to do with color grading is play with it. You can always start with a global adjustment. Let's look at another image where I probably would just do a global adjustment to this image. So let's come over to global, increase the saturation, and let's add some nice um, warmth to this. This boat was in the sun as the sun was setting. Again, shot with the lens baby, so it's very um, kind of blurry and artistic. And we'll just reduce that saturation just a little bit. Now we could also come around and add a little bit more of the blue tone. So depending on the time of day, the look you're going for. But I want to add some of that warmth. And I'm keeping the saturation pretty high. And now if I turn it on and off, you can see the difference. Now if I go and I could also do a very similar effect using the temperature slider. So do you want to keep that in mind? That would be another way to add some of that warmth. But I think you can see color grading has done um, a stronger impact to the image. I come up and add that warmth. It's a little bit stronger and I think a softer, more consistent look than just doing the temperature slider. So um, color grading is a technique that you can use with the tone curve, with the color grading tool, or just with temperature and tint where you're enhancing your final image with just a little bit of extra color. Always remember to color correct first because color grading will not do that for you. Get your colors the way you want them in your image and make any tweaks before you add that final color grading. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please like, place any comments, and subscribe to my channel. I post videos about a couple times a month, mainly focused on editing, and I'm always open to creating videos for you, so send me any comments of what you'd like to see this year. Thanks, everyone.